All righty, and welcome back to the Coltsology Podcast. My name is Parker, and today we're going to dive into uh, head coach uh, Shane Steichen's first interview at the NFL Combine as the new uh, Colts official head coach. Um, I haven't given this clip a listen to yet. I know it's a day old now, um, and a bunch of people have already posted the reactions. I've seen you know a couple takes from it that you know not a lot of said, not a lot of uh, clues have been given as to what the Colts are potentially looking at for this offseason and in the draft. Uh, but nonetheless, I do want to listen into it and kind of provide my feedback and analysis um, and kind of go from there. All right. Should be pulled up. We should be good to get started. Hey, Jim Bob's had a lot of success in this league. You know, obviously he started in the league, you know, being around Peyton Manning uh, for a while. Uh, and then he had success with Stafford and, you know, at Detroit. And then, you know, obviously this previous year with Lawrence and, and uh, Jacksonville. So his expertise with the quarterback, the way he sees the game, the preparation he puts into it. I got to spend a year with him in 2021 at Philly uh, and really get to know him as a person, see how he saw the game. Uh, that's where we created that relationship. And uh, I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to do a phenomenal job for us. Uh, looks like he's initially coming out speaking on Colts, our new Colts offensive coordinator, Jim Bob Cooter, and how his uh, relationship stem and how that pick ultimately got decided on as far as his prior relationship and, you know, laying that groundwork in the past. Yeah, obviously there's a process. You always have guys in mind as you're going through it. You have your list of guys and, you know, certain guys you try to get. But obviously you got to go through the interview process. you got to vet guys. you got to do everything you can, turn over every rock to, you know, get the best staff possible. The question there, if you can't hear it, I know it's kind of quiet. Um, he said, with Gus Bradley staying on, does that basically mean everybody on the defense is coming back as well? So it'll be interesting to see his answer here. Yeah, I, again, I've had a ton of respect for Gus. You know, I spent four years with him, just the person he is, the leader he is. Um, nothing but phenomenal things to say about Gus. You know, I'm very fortunate to have him still in the building. And then obviously the rest of the staff that's in place. Um, and, we'll, and we'll say the full staff when it comes out here soon. Here it goes. Um, I talked to my plans. All right. Back on track. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, play, coaches are like players, right? You're under contract. So some guys you're not going to be able to get, and I respect that. You know, Nick, you know, has a responsibility to keep good coach in that building, and that's what he did. I think he's talking about the report that obviously uh, <laughs> that uh, Steichen, I pronounced that right, Steichen, Steichen, uh, tried to take some guys from Philadelphia on his way out the door, um, but Sirianni kind of stepped in and said, hey, whoa, 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 stay. And I believe it was the quarterback's coach got elevated to OC, so uh, probably convincing some of those guys to stay as far as like getting some promotion, reworking some job titles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, obviously, they want to try to keep as much of that core um, around Jalen Hurts as, as intact as possible outside of obviously Shane. Um, but, you know, especially with a young quarterback's development, you want to make sure that person who's working with them is, you know, likely as consistent as possible. Yeah, I mean, if we do go that route, obviously, we're still going through that process. You know, we're going to be very detailed in that process on which uh, route we go. But again, you know, those guys have, you know, familiarity with the quarterbacks. You know, they got young, their energy, they got enthusiasm. I mean, they see the game well. They're bright, young, offensive minds uh, that can adapt. I think this game's always changing. I think you have to have a growth mindset. You got to stay one step ahead of the competition. And whether, whatever that is, finding new ideas, new drills, whatever it is to, to keep evolving the game and the quarterback play as it continues to rise in this league. I can't really hear the question there, uh, but you could definitely tell it's a guy who understands uh, the league and what it takes to be the best and understanding, hey, if, if something's working for somebody else, there's no reason you shouldn't be able to try it or adapt it into your culture, you know, put your spin on it and so on and so forth. So very, very engaged with what he's saying so far. I mean, as long as it's legal, I mean, I think you keep doing it until they as long as it it's out. legal, I mean, right? <laughs> play for us. I think we ran it 41 times last year, had a lot of success doing it. And obviously our offensive line, had a big part to do with it, and Jalen too, but uh, we'll see where that goes. Yeah, but 
Yeah, I think obviously, you know, when you when you prepare to be a head football coach, obviously you have your first couple days, you know, written out and how you need it to look and you got your checklist and going through and obviously putting together the staff is first and foremost and uh, still working through that. Got a, for, a few, few more spots to fill. Um, that's first and foremost. And then once you get that done, then it's on to the draft. Uh, then it's on to these players, obviously reaching out to the players, connecting with these players uh, just to get to know them a little bit. Obviously, I've met a few guys that have been in the building. Uh, and then a lot of guys that are off, you know, in the off season, just connecting with them via phone. You know what? Tough, physical, fast defensively. You know, like I said, I got a ton of respect for Gus and what he does defensively. Um, and, and they played us tough. And uh, a lot of respect on how they played. They were detailed. They were fun. Very complimentary of obviously Gus and, and their the relationship now that he's obviously, you know, on the team when it comes to commenting on how they prepared and executed. Um, I think obviously whether that's true or not, he, he's going to say that to the media, but uh, interesting, interesting. Fundamentally sound, uh, and they did a heck of a job against us. Like We're going to have all those conversations, you know, going through uh, in the next couple of weeks. That's a great question. I think you got to see the future. I mean, that's sometimes that's probably one of the hardest jobs is predict the future of these young guys. But what can they be? What their capabilities are? I think all these guys in this draft have talent. Um, and then how do you elevate their talent? You know, as coaches and putting them in position to succeed. But that's a great question. Um, again, as coaches, we got to do a hell of a job of evaluating that and seeing what they could be. You know, obviously he said it there, right? Like, you know, his job and his system is to, you know, put his guys and set them up to be successful, um, play in and play out, you know, based on their skill set and so on and so forth. That was something that I felt like was the biggest disconnect down the line with Frank Reich is I don't feel like his game plan and, and his staff around him were truly playing to the strengths of the players out uh, on the field and on our roster, but they were more tailored to... Uh, you know, what they thought was the the best play call for that time situationally or, you know, based on X, Y, Z. Obviously, Frank, you know, was rather gutsy when it came to going for, you know, fourth downs and, and you know, really opening, I think, Colts fans' eyes to the idea that, hey, it's fourth and short. That doesn't mean punt. Like, we can go for it. We, 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 let's, let's put, if our guys are truly that good, like, you make that fourth and two, you know, especially with guys like Jonathan Taylor on our team and so on and so forth. Um but hearing him say, like, we're going to make sure we set these guys up for success. Now, obviously, you know, some people can argue, like, that's cliche. Like, you know, that's what you're supposed to say in X, Y, Z. Um, but ultimately, as a Colts fan, right, like, that's the scale we're going to be judging him on. Is like, are you truly making those play calls now that we know he's announced that he's obviously going to be the play caller? Talking into this young quarterback's ear on Sundays, like, are you truly making play calls? Are you truly getting this team ready on Sunday? to play to their strengths and hopefully, you know, again, which should hopefully also play into some of the weaknesses of the other team. Right. And with that fast physical defense, you were touching on with Gus Bradley and what he brings to the table, be competing for the division title. The Texans are in even more disarray than us, right? With even shakier, shakier, shakier management and ownership, right? Needing more position, needing more guys to want to go there. And again, knowing management is even sh like so shaky over there, right? And their inconsistent track record, aka chaos, most guys are not going to be a free agent destination. The Titans sound like they're running it back with Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry and so on and so forth. So predict mediocrity to a hair above and or below mediocrity, mediocrity as the, the uh, delta, right? The Colts, in my opinion, if you're Jim Mercer, like, I think a lot of Colts fans said, like, you, if we, you nail this offseason, if we get, you know, these this this offseason execution right as far as head coach, OC, uh, quarterback, draft, free agency, like, there's no reason we shouldn't be dialing it up with the Jags to be able to potentially, you know, win this division. Trevor Lawrence, yes, he'll be going into his third year, but most people, say, you know, recognize that first year as pitiful, right? Last year, would most people say it was his first real year, right? Our quarterback will be what? In his first full year, hopefully coming from a relatively pro-style system, right? 
Interesting. Interesting. Let's continue. Briefly, briefly, yes, just very briefly. Again, right now, I'm just finishing out the staff right now. And once that gets finalized, I'm going to be all ball. Everything's about the staff. Got to finish out the staff. Again, I'm going to take analytics into the equation at most definitely. Obviously, I know there's a chart. You know, I'm going to listen to the chart. But again, it depends on how the game's going. The flow of the game dictates like that. I mean, if it's a go-go situation, but we're up two scores and you got a chance to go up three and kick a field goal, I'm probably going to take points there. Just situations like that. Um, and we'll go from there. Do you pursue a collaborative effort or like a run game for Oh, booking.com. Um All right, while we wait for this to finish, again, so far, been relatively impressed with his, again, composure, focus, uh, sticking to the point that he's obviously trying to convey, um, and so on and so forth. Again, really optimistic to see what happens here. Looks like it's just now getting back. Turn that back up. Yeah, I think it just depends on what you need uh, from a staff to staff, to offense, defense right now. So, I mean, if that ever came into play and we needed to use those titles, we could use those titles. You know what, there's a lot, a lot of good things to say about Philadelphia. I mean, the organization was phenomenal, first-class organization, the way they ran the operations. Um, and then again, just the way we, the, the camaraderie within the staff and the team and the players on how we built that culture there with Nick leading the charge, uh, I thought was phenomenal. And, and the, when you get the buy-in from everybody, that's when teams can become special. But you got to do a hell of a job of staying consistent with your message every single day and just doubling down on that stuff. Being consistent with your message. I believe that was one of the things he said in his initial press conference with Ballard and Ursay about being consistent with the message that you're, you're giving to the team and the players. Um, and that being something that's important. Again, hearing him double down on that and say it again in the NFL Combine introductory press conference. You like to hear it, right? Talk about getting everybody to buy in. That's, that's definitely something I want to hear. Um, because I'm going to be honest, at some point down the line last season, it, it, it really did feel like, you know, although there, there, there were those reports, uh, obviously that the, you know, especially your, your leaders and, and head guys on defense, you know, weren't going to say anything publicly um, about, again, holding every team or most teams to 20 points or less. And this offense can't do anything but trip over themselves, right? And do everything in their power not to get to 20 points. Uh, there had to be some guys on the defensive, you know, side of the ball, especially in contract years, or you know, if they're playing through injuries or whatever, you know, knowing they're, you know, they're working their tail off there, and this offense can't dial up twenty points in today's NFL. Like, it's going to be something that's frustrating. Eventually, like that could lead to some people showing their true colors, right? Uh, you know, that's the point I'm trying to get here. Is like, you know, when people are truly as competitive as they say they are, you know, you find out a real lot about people, especially when they're losing, when you're losing hard. Um, and I don't know about you, but that Minnesota game, <laughs> come on now, like embarrassing to, to the ump degree, right? And if you're a Colts fan, like obviously you want to bury that in the past and move on from it. But that was the team. What was that game like December? What was that a couple months ago? Like this, outside of, again, quarterback, Majority of these players are coming back, right? There's going to be those handful and free agency that that go the other way, right? But majority of these players are coming back, and yeah, coaching is going to hopefully tweak and tighten up some some loose bolts. But at the same time, like, man, I hate to be the Debbie Downer, but I'm one of these people. Like, you're going to have to show me, right? Like, you showed me terrible for so long. Like, yeah, I'm one of those people. It's, it's hard to remember what good looked like because it's been so long. That's a great question. I mean, that was the COVID year, and I remember we had to do his interview over Zoom, via Zoom, and that was the exposure. I think the COVID thing hit right after his pro day. We are going to do a private with him, I believe, and then the COVID thing hit, and that was done. So then it was just via Zoom and off the tape. But what I took away from that is that this is a guy that loves football and was a perfectionist and wanted to be right. And, and he did a hell of a job in that interview process, gave him some information to study. Uh, he studied it, he nailed it, and then we went to his tape and just how he talked about the game and his preparation throughout the week and what he went through Monday, you know, Sunday through 
Friday to get ready for his games in college football and just the vetting process of talking to so many different people and finding about what his mental makeup was because a lot of these guys are going to be talented. They're going to be able to throw it. They're going to be able to run. They're going to be able to make plays. But what's that edge? What's that edge that separates them? Um, here's where I'll play devil's advocate for just a second, right? You know, you heard him talk about, you know, being smart, being able to pick up stuff quick and X, Y, Z. Uh, but particularly with the quarterback position, right? Like you have to have somebody who can straight up throw lasers, right? Like you know, who can play make. I would honestly argue that play make ability outside of when he's talking about what gives him that edge, being able to pick up defenses quick, right? Being able to read a defense quick. Like that's the biggest thing you heard about Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, right? They knew, you know, before the snap was even, you know, off, you know, narrowed down, you know, to two or three potential um, defensive coverages or schemes that they're running on this potential plays, right? Um, and that's through, you know, doing their homework on XYZ, you know, those pre-snap reads, being able to know what you're looking at um, and the potential outcomes by, you know, forward thinking and so on and so forth. So, why all of that stuff is important, right? They also got to have that dog in them, right? Like they also have to have that edge. And that's going to be something that, again, looking at this draft class, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, does this, whoever they, whoever they end up drafting, do they bring that firepower and that edge that the Colts need to, you know, tilt the field in their favor? Because 4 12 and 1, they're going to need someone who can, again, really tilt the field in their favor. Goodness. Yeah, that makes sense. I think, again, whoever that guy is back there throwing it, you got to adjust to him. you got to build the offense around the quarterback first and foremost. You can't be stuck in your ways of, hey, this is the system we run or whatever it is. Like, you got to be able to adapt to that guy. And not only that guy, it's all the players around him, the receivers, the tight end. Again, I kind of said it before, but, like, at some points I kind of felt like that's what the Colts – uh, under Frank Reich, we're, we're stuck. We were stuck by playing that game of this is the system, this is what it says to do, you know, on this play, on this down, we need to balance this, you know, X, Y, Z, um, and not necessarily playing to the strengths of, of our team at that time. <laughs> and, and the fact that he said that, I wonder if that's something that him and Ballard have discussed, like as something maybe Ballard's gave him feedback on as something he didn't like under prior coaching or et cetera or something he thought maybe derailed the team or something. Again, just providing my insight and inner thought. We're about seven minutes into this 12 minute press conference. Let's finish it strong. It ends, put those guys in position to make plays. What does this receiver run? Well, what does this tight end do? Well, what does these backs do? Well, the offensive line. And I think it's the same thing on defense. Like you got to put these guys into position to maximize their talents uh, so they can shine on Sunday. Hey. He said, do you have traits that you look for? If, if you're a member of the media and you're asking the Colts head coach, what kind of traits do you look for in a quarterback? I, again, haven't watched it, but I just kind of want to see if I can guess the answer or give my, what I'll say, a stereotypical or generic head coach answer. Um, and let's see how it plays out with head coach <laughs> Shane Steichen. Um, it, the trait character traits that I'm looking for in a quarterback are um, somebody who's a you know good teammate, somebody who picks up the, those around him and makes them play better, um, somebody who's accurate, who can deliver the ball on time, uh, on location, where it needs to be, um, somebody who can play make um, with their feet, um, somebody who can uh, you know really again read those defenses early, uh, understand coverage, understand scheme. Um, understand what the defense is trying to do um, and not ultimately play into whatever trick or trap they're trying to get you into. Um, but sticking to your game plan and what you know um, is ultimately going to set your team up for the most success. Okay, maybe some of that was a bit overdone, but let's see. Again, haven't watched it, but I'm, I'm highly interested in what he's going to say. Oh, crap. We'll go back here at 7.30. Well, I think 
the physical traits, yeah. I mean, obviously, you got to be able to be able to throw it and cut it through the wind and all those things. But again, the accuracy is is one of the biggest things. Like I think when it's third and eight, and you got to have it. Like you got to be able to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike with the guy coming down, you know, barreling down your chest. Uh, I think that says a lot about a guy's toughness. Um, I, I look for that on tape. Uh, obviously, the vetting process of it, but. The physical traits, obviously, this guys come in different shapes and sizes. We've seen Hall of Famers that are six foot. We've seen Hall of Famers that are six five. Like, again, it's that it factor, right? Because everyone's going to have some talent. You got to find and dig deep. No, I mean, no. I've, we, we've seen it done. Drew Brees is a great example. He's phenomenal. Can you change I think you can. Yes, I think you can. I think you can help accuracy. I definitely do with mechanics, um, and I think. Part of it, too, is the scheme you put them in. You know what I mean? Don't make them think too much sometimes and simplify the offense to build it around the quarterback. Didn't really love that answer as far as, like, you know, can you – let me let me replay it just to make sure I, I got it right. You can. I think you – example. I mean, no, it's that it factor, right? Because everyone's going to have some talent. you got to find and dig deep. No, I mean, no. I've, we, we've seen it done. Drew Brees is a great example. He's phenomenal. Can you change accuracy was the question. Can you change accuracy? I think you can. Yes, I think you can. I think you can. Yes, I think you can change accuracy. You can help accuracy. You I can help accuracy. Um, and I think part with mechanics. So like how to throw the ball, how to use the right muscles in your arm, you know, push with, you know, whatever the right muscles are and so on and so forth to be able to get the most torque on the ball to put it, you know, ideally in the best position possible to get to the receiver. Okay, I'm following. Part of it, too, is the scheme you put him in. You know what I mean? Don't make him think too much. That's where he lost me. Don't think too much. Sometimes and simplify the offense to build it around the quarterback. Simplify the offense to build around the quarterback. I just feel like sometimes they're talking out of two sides of their mouth. Like, so often I feel like you hear, like, you know, they put them in this room and they throw all this information at them and they got to, you know, mesmerize it and understand it in such a short period of time. But then other times they're like, yeah, we're going to dumb it down to the most basic, you know, not most basic. I'm kind of being exaggerating there, but like, you know, break it down so much with the scheme so that they literally can't be forced to overthink the situation in X, Y, Z. But they're so smart. Like, I want to see them, you know, take advantage and, you know, die. I know it's not going to happen overnight, right? But at the same time, like, I want to hear him say, like, we hope to be able to, you know, take advantage of these young guys, you know, brain powers. And they're already, there are, their knowledge from playing so many snaps already, you know, in high school, seven on seven, college. Like, we hope to be able to lean into whatever the next quarterback is, their skill set, hopefully already having, you know, experience and whatever, play to those strengths and be able to dial up, you know, the best game plan possible to attack, you know, the defense, but also play to our to our strengths, not really having to worry about, oh, we can't do this because we're not sure if he, he's ready for it as far as this or that, or it might be too complex. Like, I know, again, I might be overthinking it. It's off season. We got to overthink everything. But like some of these comments, sometimes I'm like, you know, let me re I'll make him think too much sometimes and simplify the offense to build it around the quarterback. I just simplify the offense. I get it sometimes, or I get where it's coming from as far as like, don't overthink it. Like, don't make it too hard on them. But like, the NFL is a grown man's sport. It's supposed to be tough. It's a, it's the toughest league. It's the, it's hard to win. How many times have we watched these videos with Ballard and, and Frank in the past with like, I don't think people understand how hard it is to win. It's hard. So don't say it's easy. Don't say we're going to make things easy. It's hard. Everything about the NFL is hard. Hard. You know, that's a good question. I think part of it is, I think it's the obsession. Some of these guys, like, you got to love it. You got to be obsessed with it. You got to be first one in, last one to leave. Like these guys in Philly know. I mean, Jalen was in there at freaking six o'clock. He'd be in there till 9 30. And I'm like, that's what it looks like. Like, you want to play in this league for a long time? and be successful, like you gotta have that mindset every single day that I'm gonna give it everything I got and be the best I can. Yeah, I do. I feel good about where I'm at uh, right now with the progress. Again, still some things to get, you know, cleaned up. And, you know, obviously got to get into this draft, you know, start watching more of these guys, uh, all positions. Um, but but feel really good where it's all at. And then the next process is obviously, 
you know, getting into phase one and phase two with the OTAs and phase three, and obviously we get the extra week uh, with the mini camp there. So putting that schedule together here soon, shortly. Tanny, phenomenal, uh, phenomenal. I got a ton of respect for Tanny. Um, obviously played in the league for nine years, sees the game really well, sharp, very, very detailed. Just he gets it. You know what I mean? Those conversations that I've had with him um, over the past two years, the way he sees the game, talks about the game, clear, concise. Uh, there's no gray area with him. We, obviously, the game might be played. There might be some gray, but the way he teaches it is, is second to none. Again, I think when you're evaluating guys, especially when you're going through the process, is the vetting of guys. You got to find out. You got to ask every single person that knows this guy, that's been around this guy. What's he like? What makes him tick? What's his office hours? How does he study tape? I mean, all those little details. And then as coaches, you got to have a detailed plan when you go and meet with the. What are his office hours? That's what he said. Could you imagine, you know, somebody hitting your homie up and being like. What's Parker's office hours like? <laughs> Trying to have some fun with it, right? <laughs> These guys, whether it's here at the Combine or there, they come in for the top 30 visit. Uh, hey, here's, what, here's the plan. Here's how we're going to find these things out. What's that? That's Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, CDA National. Uh, it's a club up there in Coeur d'Alene. I went up to it this summer. My buddy's... Uh, my buddy's dad and him are uh, building this new club. So if anyone's interested, it's a great place. Yeah. Uh, I think that's the end of it, actually. Okay. Um, so some final takeaways, final thoughts. Um, after listening to about 11 minutes of it, obviously, um, didn't really give away too much as far as like obviously what he might be leaning in or what his position or favor might be for this obviously upcoming pick that we all assume will be a quarterback. Um, but I did hear some things that honestly as a Colts fan, especially knowing the role that the Colts uh, head coach plays and, and, you know, getting things ready on Sunday and so on and so forth. Um, I think this, this, this guy's about winning. This guy's a, you know, look you in your eyes, you know, tell you what we need to do, you know, get you to buy in, um, get everybody to row that same way, um, but isn't so stuck in his ways. Again, this you know, early analysis, right? You know, it sounds like, again, you got to show me, right? But you're speaking, speaking my language, talking about playing to our strengths, because that was something I felt like I was constantly saying, like, it doesn't feel like the Colts are doing a good enough job of doing that, right? Paying a guy like Mo Ali Cox last offseason, and then not using him all season. Whose idea was that? Who, can I speak to the manager? Who, whose idea was that? Whose idea was that? Was that the same guys who idea was to say, hey, if I played fantasy football, I draft Naheem Hines. Well, you're looking at a guy who took that advice, drafted Naheem Hines, and it did not go well, right? Um, when Ballard gives you those playmakers, especially on offense, when we know how stingy he can be about, you know, making those splashes and, and so on and so forth, like, make them rock stars. Make them rock stars. Um, so, interested to see, obviously, um, moving forward. I haven't seen Ballard's press conference. I'm going to watch that one up next. Um, but very excited. Very excited to see how the team responds to him. Um, as we know, they they respond well to just about anybody, right? Frank Reich, they loved him. You remember, um, you know, after the news came out, there was a bunch of players who, you know, were upset and talking about, you know, the reason he got fired was our performance. Yep. And ultimately, the reason Jeff Saturday didn't get rehired, if the Colts probably would have went 8 no, do you think Jeff Saturday would be back as our head coach right now? If those players would have won and we would have went 8 no in his games? Yeah, he'd probably be back. He'd probably be back, right? But because we didn't win and because we fumbled that bag against Dallas and we fumbled the bag against Minnesota and we were embarrassing against the Giants and we couldn't win our final game of the year at home against the Texans and you're going to tell me we were trying to tank anyway, but again, it was embarrassing, right? 
And I'm not so I'm just not gonna jump right back into it as far as like giving this team my trust until like I see it. Because this offense was broken. I'm talking like you put the key in the ignition, it's not even chugging. It was that broke. It was that bad. So again, obviously he's the guy. What did Ursay say? He's the, the special mind, or what I I don't have the word verbiage right in front of me, but basically saying like he's he's a difference maker when it comes to the offensive play calling and an offensive mindset. So Again, very excited to see it. Very excited to see what Ballard has to say again from seeing some of the tweets already about it for people who've seen it. It doesn't seem like much. Um, but as always, I try to provide my own two cents and analysis. Um, feel free to connect with me on Twitter, at Coltsology, Instagram, so on and so forth. Consider subscribing, uh, sharing this with any friends, family who might also be interested in the Colts. Um, looking to, again, grow the channel. Uh, appreciate any feedback as always. And until next time.